Hello everyone, welcome to Handmade by Trish. I'm doing this video to go in conjunction with a tutorial on making a gift card holder. So I won't keep you waiting, I'll turn you over and we'll get started. Okay, here's the gift card holder that we're going to be making. Um, it's got a little belly band, you just take the belly band off open it up and your gift card is inside. So um, you need very few supplies and it's really quick and easy to put together. So I'm actually going to show you um, through the whole cutting process, um, you can actually, depending on whether you're using uh, the US letter size or myself using the A4, um, you should be able to get two gift card holders out of one sheet of A4 paper or, or letter size if you're watching this from the US. So you're basically going to cut your your cardstock in half. So here's the piece I have prepared earlier. In fact, it's the other half of that one that I've already made for you. So um, your main gift card holder piece of cardstock, that is going to measure 10 and a half centimetres by 25.4 centimeters. Um, the inch measurements for those doing inches is in the description below. So this is already at 10 and a half because I had cut this. Uh, this is the other half of this one here. I just need to cut it the long way. And so that is meant to be 25.4 to there. And we'll just take that bit off the end um, and then we just need to do a little bit of scoring now I have got the scoring dimensions and everything below as well I actually do score in inches even though everything else is in centimeters I actually score in inches for this project um, but I will put the centimeter straight millimeter um, conversions in the description below but if you do have inches on your trimmer i do suggest that you you or scoring board if you're using a scoring board it is easier with the inches measurements so uh, the first score mark is going to be at three inches then again at four inches but before we do the four inches we're just going to turn the cardstock over so here's my three inch score mark we're just going to turn it over and then line it up at four inches. I'll explain why in a moment. We're then going to turn the cardstock back over again and score at five inches. And then at eight inches. Okay, so let's just bring this up. So um, this was my three inch score line, my four inch is the other way and the reason for that is this whole sort of mountains valleys and where you fold your cardstock. So you should fold your cardstock so that the mountain or the bumpy end is on the inside. So if we fold our cardstock with the bump on the inside, the reason I turned it over was because we actually want this one to go the opposite direction. Then go back to the original direction and then just this one so you're going to end up with this odd little shape here so that's what we're trying to achieve um, i do recommend you using your bone folder just make sure your edges are, are all squared up and using your bone folder helps make you get a nice crisp line to make all those folds sit nice and flat So they're all done. So that is um, my main base bit already. Now, um, Stamping Up don't sell these anymore, but if you do have a little um, corner punch, I always think it's nice just to do the corners, but if you don't have one, don't worry, it's absolutely not necessary. Um, so skip this step out if you don't have a corner punch. Okay. So that basically is the base of my gift card holder. So um, 
pretty simple as you can see so i'm just going to pop that to one side the next thing we're going to do is get the designer series paper ready the designer series paper that i've used for this project is painted christmas it's 12 by 12 paper there are some very beautiful um, designs in here and choose a paper that you like both the front and the back because we're going to use both sides we're going to use one side on the outside and one side on the inside now one sheet of 12 by 12 will also do two um, gift card holders so in the uh, metric measurements we are cutting so if we imagine this is all joined up together here and we're cutting them into 10 centimeter strips um, i'm just going to grab my trimmer back so this should already be 10 centimeters in width and this one i might just need to trim just the tiniest bit off to make this 10 as well now, when I cut the cardstock, this will depend entirely on the cardstock that you use. Um, if it's directional, depending on the pattern of the paper that you're using. So I like to, when I chop these out, I like to do them in sequence so that all of the sequences join up together. And what I mean by that is if I show you in this example, this pit belonged to this bit. Um, this actually belonged to the piece here but it just means that when you're looking at them and when you're looking at that they actually join up so you want to be thinking about that um, particularly too if you've got um, a directional pattern this isn't so bad but if you've got a directional pattern when you're sticking them down you want to make sure that that will facing the right way up for when it's folded that, that these images aren't upside down so I like to when I cut this project out I'm going to use the, the main strip for my inside. And you're going to cut one piece at four and a half centimetres. And just pop that to one side. The next one is going to be seven centimetres. Pop that there. Then two centimeters, another two centimeters, and then one more at seven centimeters. So this is just going to be a bit of spare. So this is going to be um, the inside of my card and or gift card holder and these two pieces here are just going to be flipped the other way then um this is going to be the front part so i'm going to do another piece at four and a half centimeters and then i need two at seven i don't need the two um little pieces because we don't have that little center flap on the outside that's only on the inside so those are going to line up like so right we can get this out the way now so um on this one i put the pattern on the inside but I'm going to do this one, mix it up and do it a little bit different. So we'll put this pattern instead on the outside. So we'll turn these ones over and this is going to be the outside this time. We all like to change it up a bit, don't we? Right, so using my corner punch, I'm just going to round off the corners on one side of my four and a half. Um, if I just move these into the picture a little bit more. So you can see I've just rounded off these corners here and then I'm going to do the same on the bit that's going to be my front piece. Okay. So these are all now the right layers that we need to stick to the base that we've done. So if we do the inside first, I'm just move the outside pieces to one side. So basically, if we lie this out, these are all going to go in here like so.
so. So you need um, some double-sided adhesive. I've got here the stamping seal. Unfortunately, it's a little bit broken, so I'm just using this up so that I can put a new refill in it. Um, so I just, I need to do this with the lid off because I just need to kind of pull it along as we go. Um, and that's just going to line up. Now, all the measurements give you a nice little border all the way around. So when you're placing it down, you're just going to place it so that you've got kind of an even border all the way around. Have I come to the end? No, no. I'm looking forward to using up that so that I can replace it with a new one. So you'll see those match up, but I'm, I'm just going to leave that border. And let's just pop that down like so. Now, when you put these two pieces down, we actually want to put them slightly closer to these big panels. We want to have a bigger gap in the middle. And the reason for that is we're going to cut some of that away. So the more of it that we can um, leave free, it will look more centered when we come to cut it away. Mm, a bit tricky, this stamp and seal. Um, just checking that I've got it the right way up because I've got it mixed now yeah that way so we're just going to I say sort of center it we're just going to make it a bit nearer the bottom fold on that strip it goes like that so then we'll just pop that down there And then the last panel. Stamp and seal wouldn't normally do this. It's just this particular one. I don't know what happened, but it, at some point it got jammed. And yeah, this is the best I can do. I'm just, um, this one actually would have married up to this piece. So um, it doesn't really matter which way around I put this one. And then we're just going to give this an equal border. All right. So that's the inside. So now to do the outside, we're going to just repeat the process. So these two are going to go on here and this one here. Now, if you had something where potentially your image is going to be upside down, I so something that's very directional, actually kind of fold it up a little bit so that you're looking at it and when you turn this over you'll see that maybe you want to turn this piece up the other way than what you might have had it with this particular pattern i'm fine but with some patterns um, it doesn't work so well and actually before we put the um, designer series paper on this side we're just going to trim off probably a millimeter off this edge here because what we want it to do when we fold it up is to sit flat and because of that little um because when we folded it you've got that little mountain is stopping it from sitting flat so i just line it up in my trimmer and just i kind of bring it to the other side of this um the this the runner if you like and then just take that off now, I do need to change the blade on mine. But <laughs> <clears throat> so this now, when we fold it up, will sit nice and flat. And that's what we want. We want it to be flat. So if you have got it where it's bumping because of this, uh, this little piece here, then we're just going to trim off a tiny wee bit off of there. Okay, so now we're going to work on this side. Okay, 
it's easier when you've got the corners chopped off it's easy to know which way is the right way so maybe starting with this one is the easiest one and that's gonna go that way on there on there so we just put the little gap in and we're not putting anything on here because this is going to be hidden so we just need to put our last panel on Okay, so now you should have something looking a bit like this. So now you need a really good, strong adhesive. Now you can use the Stampin' Seal, and I will use um, that for this one. Um, you want a really, really strong adhesive, and one that's really quite narrow. And what you're going to do is you're going to put adhesive from the center fold to the next fold, all down this outside and then down here we want to avoid that middle bit because this is where our opening is going to become so we're going to go down these two little sides and then we're just going to go down here so i've got the stamp and seal plus here and you want to try and have it as close to the edge without it going over the edge as possible oops <laughs> not doing very well with the stamp and seal and then i'm just going to go along this edge here i just want to make sure that i'm going right i don't want it going over the edge i don't want it going over the fold so this is where our gift card holder is going to sit in here slot in here and that's why we need these as far to the edges as we can without going over and as close to the fold as we can without it going over the fold so once you've put your adhesive on like that, we're actually going to close that up. Give it a good press down so that it really adheres. Okay, now we're going to bring our paper trimmer back. And this is where we are going to just cut a millimetre off on this fold so that it opens it up. So I'm just going to go pretty much to that other side of that um, track. And this is why we put everything down a little bit when we stuck the designer series paper down. And because it's two layers, you might need to go backwards and forwards. But there we are. We've chopped our little fold off now. So now we should be able to spread this open. And I'm just going to grab the Nespresso card out of there. And then that is just going to slot inside there. And this is why you really want a thin adhesive. Um, so that, because there's not a lot of room for the movement. If you're using the letter, US letter size paper, it does give you a little bit more room. So you really want to get it right over by the edge or if you've got a thinner tape, but that's one that's strong, then that's good too. So now we've put our gift card in the wrong way around. Okay, so now we've got our gift card in. We can fold it all up and there's our, our little gift card. So now we just want to create a belly band for it. Now, um, I will cut into a new piece. I usually have scraps um, that I can use as a belly band, but I didn't think to grab a scrap out. So rather than keep you waiting, I'm just going to take it out of a new sheet of paper. So um, for our belly band, we want to measure two and a half centimeters. I can actually do it on this side of the trimmer. So two and a half centimeters. 
and we want 23 and a half centimeters this way or actually 23 will be all right um i the one i did earlier was 23 the measurements that i've always done it was 24 but i just had a scrap left so i did 23 so you can get away with 23 23 and a half centimeters so here's our belly band i like to um when i put the belly band on i like to do it with the gift card in place because it's then at its thickest because you don't want the belly band to be too tight and i just kind of place it across the middle and then just use my fingers to gently ease it around to the back and then line it up you don't want this to be too tight because you want people to be able to to lift it backwards and forwards and you'll see even though I took half a centimeter off there's enough of an overlap there and I recommend you using a good strong adhesive again something like stamp and seal to just put the adhesive on the end here so we're just going to wrap it around you want it to be I say firm but not tight you want it to be snug so it doesn't fall off but you want it loose enough that it's going to go up and down now you actually put the um, join to the front because we're going to cover that join up so I've already cut here um, a label this label comes out of the candy canes dies that's this one here and it cuts the holes out for the ribbon the stamp that I have chosen is Christmas Chair, and that comes out of the Sweet Candy Canes uh, stamp set, this one here. This one also fits nicely on the tag, which is Candy Cane Wishes and Mistletoe Kisses. That also fits nicely on here. Now, I'm going to use um, the cardstock that I used to put my designer series paper onto was the Evening Evergreen. So I've used a soft, soft succulent, which ties in nice with that. And I'm going to stamp it with the Evening Evergreen ink. Just want to very gently ink that up. And we're just going to stamp that onto our tag. A little bit off but never mind good enough <laughs> okay we we'll just move that out of the way um we then want a piece of ribbon that is around about 55 centimeters in length now um here i'm using the soft sea foam um it's called seam binding ribbon i love this i like the um not just the feel of it but it, it's so lovely to tie with it's a really nice ribbon just going to use my paper here to do uh, what did i say 55 centimeters so that's 40 i mean just roughly um 40 50 so 55 is around about there okay so you're going to thread your ribbon into the back of the tag and then across and up to the front again now before i put the dimensionals on the tag i just want to find out roughly where it's going to be sitting so you want enough here of the ribbon that you can tie the bow around about here so I want the tag to be perhaps just a tad over that way a little bit so I want that to be there so just leaving it in place I'm just going to open it up and get a couple of dimensionals And with these, I'm just going to pop one in the middle. I actually want it to go over the ribbon 
a little bit so it's touching the ribbon i don't want it right at the very edge because this tag actually does go past the belly band a little bit but this way too it will hold the ribbon it will stop the ribbon from sliding around we'll kind of hold it in place so let's just take the backing off the dimensionals And then we can pretty much put that where we kind of decided we wanted it. And then just making sure your ribbon is not crossed over at the back. We're just going to tie a pretty bow. This is such nice ribbon to tie. It has a lovely drape to it, this ribbon. Okay, so a nice pretty bow. And then just using our paper snips, I'm just going to chop the ends so they're not quite so long. And look at that look how pretty that is so they're just gonna slide off the belly band open up their gift card holder and there is their gift card inside a really lovely way to pretty up those um, gift cards so that is my little project for today if you would like to see other videos from handmade by Trish please subscribe to my channel and click on the notification bell to let you know when the next video is available um, hope you will all oh, actually I was about to finish and then realized I did I don't know if you guys have seen yet the very very cool birthday book organizer by stamping up but this is it here it's amazing um, and inside um, it comes the kit comes with both the book and the cards for you to dress up and I had some leftover sequins so I actually added a few of those um, to my last one so I'm just going to add a few of these we have sequins in our catalogues and in, in various different colors so if you don't have the card kit then that's okay you can still get these sequins anyway and I just popped a few of those on the tag just to give it a bit of sparkle there we go look at that there all done now <laughs> So I hope you will join me again for one of my videos. Thank you for watching and uh, have a good rest of the afternoon. Bye.